afloat with Henry Morgan. Believing that they have proof positive that the girl they know as Antoinette de Lacy is an imposter, Captain Morgan, Sir Thomas Motford and Colonel Atterbury set out about searching for her. Remembering her friendship with Geoffrey Hunter, Morgan thinks that perhaps she might have gone to him aboard the Flying Gull. But Morgan doesn't yet know that Hunter is missing, that Kitty, with the aid of Dolores and Dietz, has had him arrested as an escaped convict. Kitty, too, has met trouble. At dawn, she retires to her quarters, realizing that if Morgan knows what has really happened to Hunter, he will help. Perhaps she should go to him. But Dietz enters and throttles Kitty into insensibility. He then carries her cautiously out to an awaiting closed-in carriage. There he finds, to his amazement, Dolores waiting inside. She tells him she is going to the hiding place he has for Kitty. You want to come with me to the place where I'm taking Kitty? Of course. You have boasted as to what a good hiding place it is. If it is such a good place where they will not look for Kitty, it is a good place where they will not look for me. Ah, how could such a disaster as this happen when, we, when we've been so successful? I do not know. I can only imagine that someone has come out from England. Someone who knows the real Antoinette de Lesky. It was indeed fortunate, the arts, that I was able to discover what was wrong in time and so make my escape. I could have easily been caught, and then none of us would be returning to Cuba. So I think that we can believe our luck might still be holding. Tell me, how far away is this hiding place? I told you. It's a stone hut overlooking the place where the convicts work. It's about half an hour's drive. No one ever goes into that part of the jungle, only the convicts. You'll be safe there. But I must warn you, it's very primitive, just a stone hut. It will keep me safe until the ship comes from Cuba. You had better hurry, Diaz. Every minute we waste, the search for me grows more intense. And remember, you have to get back to the ship as quickly as you can. I know. How frequently will you make visits to the hut? We will have to rely upon you to bring us food. Don't worry. Your safety is precious to me. Don't forget that without you, I cannot return with Kitty to Cuba. I see that you are cared for to the best of my ability. Now, you remain inside the carriage with Kitty. If she shows signs of consciousness before we reach our destination, gag her with a scarf. You two, follow me up the gangplank. You'll soon find out from Hunter if there's been any sign of this woman. Watch. Who's on watch here? I am Captain Morgan. Oh, uh, fetch I. Go fetch me Hunter and hurry, man. Uh, well, Captain Morgan, he, uh, he ain't here, sir. Not here? Well, where is he? Uh, I don't know, sir. Has there been anyone on the ship looking for him this morning? Uh, no, sir. Not since I came on watch. Who was on watch before you? Uh, Matthew, sir. Go and fetch him. I want to work with him. Hey, Captain. Mr. Thomas, Colonel Atterbury. You'd better follow me to my cabin. So Hunter isn't aboard, eh? No. I wonder where the devil has got to. The man on watch said that no one had been here this morning, so perhaps you're wrong about your supposition that the woman came here. Yes, maybe so, but she might have come here last night. She was devilish late returning to Sir Thomas's home. Remember that? However, Patch, I will send Matthew to us, and he'll be able to tell us who came aboard last night. And perhaps he can tell me what time Hunter left. He might have gone to meet her. Why, by St. David, what's this? A body on the floor. Wait till I turn him over. Why, by thunder, Matthew. The man who was on watch? Yes, the same man. Stabbed, eh? Hmm, has been devilish business aboard my ship. What would he be doing here in your cabin? Well, it seems obvious, doesn't it? He was on watch last night. You there, Captain Morgan? Come in, Patch, I want you. I can't find Matthews. My lord, love me. Matthew. Yes. That's why you couldn't find him. You didn't see Matthew when you took over your watch. I, uh, uh no, I uh, knew it was time I went up and watch, and I couldn't see Matthew. I thought perhaps he just skipped it. I wasn't going to say anything about it. I was just going to ask him private, like. So there's no knowing when he was killed. You were about to make a surmise on Matthew's death when this, uh, this man came in and interrupted you. Uh, what were you about to say, Captain Morgan? Matthew was on watch last night. There's only one thing that would bring him to my quarters. Mm -hmm. It was because he thought that something was wrong. 
If we can guess what was wrong, then we know why he was killed. Now, you have no idea, Sir Thomas, where this woman was going last night. None at all. I was surprised when she left the house. My guess is that she was going to see Hunter. Being attracted to Hunter would not make her come to this ship. She'd know that the risk that she was running by coming aboard the Flying Gull. There must have been a strong reason for her to come here. You're surmising that she did come. Yes. Now, let's work out a theory on that assumption. Why should she so urgently want to see Jeffrey Hunter? She had no idea when she left the house that you, Colonel Atterbury, were in Jamaica. She had no idea that she was to be unmasked. So that it was not the reason that she came to see Hunter. By all the devils which guard the sea, I'm remembering her last visit to my ship when I caught her in my cabin and what she was after. The Aztec necklace. The Aztec necklace, yes. And there's only one man aboard my ship who knew besides me where I kept it. Hunter? Jeffrey Hunter. He surprised me one day at a hiding place. It didn't perturb me at all because I thought I could trust him. But when a man gets into the toils of an unscrupulous woman, she can work wonders with his honesty. Hatchoy? Uh, yes, sir. Did you see Jeffrey Hunter at all last night? As a matter of fact, I did, Captain Morgan. He came back aboard ship pretty early. In great state he was, sir. Word got about that he'd told Matthew, who was on watch, that no one was to know he was aboard ship. He acted very queer like Captain Morgan. I see. Would you say, Patchy, that he acted as though he had a secret? Yeah, definitely, sir. Without looking, I know just what has happened. But I'd better confirm my suspicions. As the place where I keep all my treasures is secret, uh, I wonder would you mind leaving this cabin for a moment? Not at all. Uh, take them outside and wait with them, Patchy, and like all. Yes, Captain Morgan. Will you come this way with me, please, gentlemen? Certainly. What Morgan fears has happened, this will be a blow to him, Colonel Atbury. He thought a lot of Hunter. Who is Hunter? Where did he come from? I don't know. Different from the usual type of man you find aboard these ships. Obviously a gentleman. He came to join Morgan, I don't know. Uh, are you being treacherous, <coughs> mine? I'll hang him from the yard up. I'll quarter him. I'll tear his limbs up. It seems as though Morgan was right. Let's go back. I gave my trust, my confidence to a rotten scoundrel. A man who took that which I treasure most. But I'll find him and he'll die, I swear it. He'll die more horribly than you could imagine. Here. Here, Patchai. Go back to the crew and tell them that I'll give the man who brings Hunter back alive aboard the Flying Gull 500 guineas. Yes, sir. We'll get him. So the Aztec necklace is gone. The Aztec necklace? Yes, Patchai. That's why Hunter isn't aboard. Only he knew the hiding place. That's why this woman who's masquerading as Antoinette de Lacey is missing. Hunter has gone off with her. Together with a necklet. I know where the necklet is, Captain. You do? Where? Well, they're at the Dolphin Tavern. We all saw it with our own eyes. So what, man? Speak out. I saw Kitty wearing the necklet at the tavern last night. Kitty? Yes, you couldn't mistake it. We couldn't make it out at all. Yeah, we'll soon know all about it. Gentlemen, to the Dolphin Tavern. Quiet it is now the act has gone. What good are you for company, Kitty? Unless I take the gag off your mouth and you can answer me, I will go mad from the minute. Now, it's no good you're crying out for help. No one will hear you. Wait a minute. Is that better with the gag removed? What does it all mean? I can't understand anything that's happened. There is nothing for you to understand. The act wishes you to be kept here for as long as it suits him. It doesn't concern you now you are his property. Why, I recognize you. You're the woman who was with Jeffrey Hunter in the garden. You made me betray him to the authorities. You must have loved him a lot to do that. I had him in the hollow of my hand. He told me everything I wished to know. I didn't want him. He sickened me. I am completely indifferent to his fate. Don't. Don't talk like that. Did... Did he love you? Mm -hmm. I think so. And you don't care that he's going to die? I believe it was all a trick to make me do it. What's been happening? What does it all mean? Why did Diaz make me wear the necklace? <laughs> you are causing something which does not concern you. Your very feet, your very life depends upon Diaz now. But well, what's going to happen? You'll learn in time. I am sorry I cannot untie your wrist. You see, I don't care what you do, but I do care about my safety. But you, you're the governor's kinswoman. <laughs> that is what everyone believed. But now they know they are all out looking for me. 
I care not whether you escape from the arts, but I do care if you escape from me. My safety depends upon holding you, Kitty. You in a place where you must keep your mouth shut, where you cannot tell where I am. I have loosened the bonds which tied your ankles. You can walk about this miserable little hut. But I cannot let your hands go free. You will be staying here just a few days, and then we go on to the cove. A ship is coming. We will be going aboard her. This ship will be... Will be what? You see, I'm... I'm frightened. What is that you say? What are you looking at from the window? What can you see down there? This hut overlooks the swamp. Down there amongst the heavy green trees, a little party is marching. In the middle of the party is a man who is heavily shamed. He is a convict going to work in the swamp. Well, let me see. Let me see. Look, they are going into a small clearing now. See? Jeffrey. Oh, yes, you're Jeffrey, going to the place where they take escaped convicts, going to the place where they work them until they die. <laughs> is it not ironical that he should be down there, and you, the woman who sent him to such a fate, is kept a prisoner overlooking the place where he will be working? So Kitty, the woman who loves Jeffrey Hunter and yet who betrayed him, stands at the window watching him go to his doom, helpless to aid him. Make sure you hear the next exciting episode of A Float with Henry Morgan. Thank mm-hmm. you.